It's Friday, May 4th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, intern Mackenzie Connor has an update from Barnstable High School. It's time to get those beach parking permits. We're tracking turtles, and we make a visit to the Osterville Library. First, let's start with some news you can use. Last night at Town Council, the lofts at 57 got the go-ahead to the next stage after lengthy public comment. The development is an eight-unit mixed-income community located on Ridgewood Avenue in downtown Hyannis. The Housing Assistance Corporation intends to convert an underutilized vacant lot with a deteriorated foundation and in its place construct three buildings of multifamily residential units along with site improvements, including a shared parking lot with 13 spaces. The cottage-style buildings will be clustered around a shared outdoor space to create a pocket neighborhood which will provide a strong sense of community and fit into the character of the surrounding residential single and multifamily homes. What is believed to be a small pygmy sperm whale washed ashore on Coble Beach. IFA officials were examining the roughly eight foot long all white carcass around 5 p.m. on Thursday. International Fund for Animal Welfare officials are investigating the highly decomposed whale carcass. We responded, but we'll need to look at it a bit more to confirm the species, said Misty Niemeyer, IFA Necropsy Coordinator. Here is Mackenzie with an update from Barstable High School. Hello, I'm Mackenzie Connor, intern for Channel 18. There's a lot happening at Barnstable High School this week. For seniors, prom tickets are on sale. They are $85 and include admitted to the prom, celebration, and professional photographer. Both permission slips for a BHS guest and a non-BHS guest are with Mrs. Lomax in room 1224 and Mrs. Friel in room 2100. Also for seniors, the 2018 Barnstable High School yearbook is published and will arrive in May. For those who haven't pre-purchased one, they are $100 and there's a limited supply. Volunteers are now needed for the after prom celebration. You can sign up with Sign Up Genius on the Barnstable High School website. All slots need to be filled, so sign up today. For students and staff, there is a first aid certification class offered on May 21st from 4 to 6 p.m. in the BHS cardio room. There is limited space, so if you're interested, sign up soon in the nurse's office. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Mackenzie Connor. The beautiful weather this week has us dreaming of days at the beach or on the boat. Patty Machado, Director for Barnstable Recreation, has all the details on getting those all-important parking permits. It's beach weather, 70 degrees, but you need a beach sticker or now known as a parking permit. Here to explain the difference and all you need to know to get those stickers on your cars to hit the beach, Patty Machado from Barnstable Rec. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So let's clarify a little bit for folks. Uh, beach stickers are really parking permits. Uh, we call them beach stickers because we're old school, but tell us there's no difference. No, there is no difference. Um, we changed the name to parking permit because there was some confusion. Um, when you go to a landing, you need to have a parking um, permit, and um, aka beach sticker. Um, it's the same thing. So the idea was to make sure that it was more clear, but Everyone that grew up here still calls it a beach sticker. And it's okay if they come in and they ask for their beach sticker for the year. We all know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we all know. I still call it a beach sticker as well, and I get corrected every so often. So, you know. Right. So these uh, landings, uh, just as long as it's displayed, just like you would for your, your you know, going to the beach kind of thing. But right. there's a special one out there that's helping to fund um, the, the refurb of one of the uh, landings. Yes, East Bay um, Road, we actually have a $10. Um, to, so to park there, you have to have this little square put on your beach uh, parking permit. Okay. Um, and if you get that, then you can park along the, lo the road, that, and so you can uh, um, park there to put your boat in the water. And all that money goes back into that um, landing. So, you know, we've talked about doing it in other locations. I'm not sure that it's gone that far yet, but um, mm -hmm. hopefully in the future, because it really does make a difference. They've been able to redo that, and it looks it's so much simpler, uh, much safer putting your boat in. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it was easy because the money was being coming in. It was completely devoted to that. 
That's fantastic. I, I love how that, you know, voting communities are very close knit yeah. and they, they really want to do the right thing. So, you know, having that extra 10 to kind of, you know, make things good at their landing yeah. is, is a great idea. Uh, no changes this year, so no increases. So right. talk to us a little bit about what folks, residents and visitors alike, need to know to get their beach stickers this year. Well, we've been selling um, parking permits since um, I think it was before December, um, okay. we, we sent out the information um, via email. We don't no longer do mail outs um, because it costs money and we're mm -hmm. trying to save that um, and save us from increasing our um, parking permit fees. So this helps save that. Um, we still do that throughout the summer. You can still do that. You still need to pat send in your email. You can get that downloaded. Um, you can send that um, email um, or that download of the um, mail-in sticker. Fill that out, bring in your Send in your registration, um, and then um, your whatever, how many, however many registrations you want to put in there, you can put in there along with a check. And um, we usually three to four days turnaround. We've done really well. Um, we've stayed right up on top of it. Um, but you can continue to do that throughout the summer. But know that if you want to go to the beach, just because you've sent your stuff in doesn't mean that you've got a sticker on your car. And right. unfortunately, they won't let you into the beach um, unless you have a sticker on your car mm -hmm. um, or you pay. Um, there are two different kinds of beaches in Barnstable. There's the resident only, which is the majority of our beaches, and then there's open to the public. Um, open to the public, it's $20 a day to, to go to the beach. Um, so it's $40 to get a resident. So once you've gone twice, you've actually um, gotten your money back. As right. far as I'm concerned, it's a great, a great deal. $40 mm -hmm. is um, very reasonable to get a, a sticker and be able to have the services that we offer. Right. So the um, uh, the resident beaches, we can clarify too that some of these resident beaches are actually ponds and lakes. Yes. Yes. So um, you know you need the the right. sticker for those too. Right. Um, you know we have um, Calmus Vets. Let's see if I can get through them. Calmus Vets, Sea Street, um, Craigville, Sandy Neck, and then Hathaway's Pond are all. Um, open to the public. Hathaway's okay. Pond is half of it, half the price. Um, it's ten dollars um, for that site okay. to go each day. Um, I can't remember; it was so long ago, um, but there was some law that was passed so that that's more affordable um, okay. to get into. And then all the other sites in the town, um, you have to have a parking um, permit. Um, we do sell seasonal passes as well. Um, they're two hundred. This is where I get confused because. There's so many different, it's $250 for a visitor seasonal. So if you don't live here and you're renting a house for the summer, you can get a seasonal pass. Oh, great. Um, and so that's $250 and that can go in your car, but you can only go to the public beaches. It doesn't entitle you to go to um, any of the right. residents' um, beaches. We also sell $50, no, $75 now for um, a weekly sticker. So you can come in and get a weekly sticker if you're down here for that week and go to the public beaches for $75. So that would save... Um, save you some money while you're sure, here at twenty dollars a day for right the, you know uh, that adds up quick for a week yeah it does and it, it's so it's a way to help people save money and enjoy mm -hmm. their time while they're here and I hope that um, the, the hotels and everyone knows that so that it, they can help right. um, help their visitors when they come in right and again the the beach stickers aren't just the town collecting money this money goes back into the beaches right we're required to by the town town council requires us to raise enough money, so it's beach stickers and um, parking passes that they get at the, the gates, but we need to cover 100% of our costs. So that includes the maintenance, that includes the lifeguards, that includes the gate attendants, the, clothes, the, the toilet paper that goes in, it's all costed out so mm -hmm. that we know we're cover recovering 100%. And we're required to by the town council's um, I don't know what you're calling it, but they're Ordinance telling, yeah, whatever they want to say, they can tell us, and that's what we're required right. to do. Well, that's that's actually a pretty darn good deal, forty dollars for a yes. resident for the whole year. And I think some people always think that their uh, their beach parking permit lasts forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not the case. Not yeah. the case. It's a specific time, so when you get it, it goes through the following year. Right. It's January um, to January. Right. And people realize that you do need that sticker year round. Yes. Um, for the most part, I mean, when it's snowing and it's crazy, th no one's gonna the parking. Um, enforcement's not going to go crazy. Right. However, you know, on a, on a nice fall day, um, and it's beautiful, uh, and you go down to Millway, you right. know, it's a pretty small site. And for residents not to be able to go down to their beach, they paid for a parking permit. So they will enforce it. If it's a really nice day, and it, 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 
you know, they're not trying to bust anybody. They're right. trying to make Park happy, as the, you know, the, right. the town's really promoting, um, and so are we. But we also want our residents to be able to go to the sp specific mm -hmm. sites that they can go to. Anything uh, uh, else you want to make sure everybody knows about getting those stickers this year? Well, one of the big confusing things is that um, every year you have to bring in your valid registration. That that's that's not up for negotiation. We need to write down your license plate number that goes on every you know on the permit that goes on your car. And uh, we have an actually we have a competition with our gate staff, you know, to make sure that um, everyone's pa pass matches their license plate, and uh, they get. Um, they win some prizes, <laughs> and actually, <laughs> the person that um, gets that employee of the year who, who um, basically catches the most stickers that are messed up, yeah. they get to pick the color f of the sticker. So this oh. year's yellow. Um, right. So last year's um, winner decided that. And then, um, you know, right. so, so, the, the, so we are really challenging our staff to make sure that everyone has a valid sticker. Um, and it has to go on the right car. That, that happens most of the time. We give you a little note that just says, your sticker doesn't match. You need to go down to the office and get it straightened out. Okay. Um, but we start selling on Monday. Um, we, our doors have been closed. As you know, the HYCC yeah. has been closed. The lobby looks phenomenal. They um, regrouted and, um, oh, it, and it's sparkling shiny. It's, it's, it's amazing to me the difference, um, and maybe people don't realize recognize it. Yeah, but when it, but you go someplace every day, <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, but so we will be that lobby will be open starting Monday so that we can sell parking permits, um, and we have volunteers that do that. We're the only ones on the Cape. We have a great group of people that come in to sell those permits. So very friendly, very nice. They're here to to be hospitable and and get to know their community. So. We're also still looking for volunteers, if anybody's okay. interested. Um, we all just ask for um, three, three and a half hours a day, one day a week. So we're not asking for too much, but Good. if you want to meet your community, oh, it's such a great way to um, give back to the town um, and have some fun. They really do have some fun selling bead stickers, which I know sounds weird, but it's a great group of people. Fantastic. Yeah. Sounds like fun, and guess what? Beach weather. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for coming Thank on you. the show. Sandy Neck Beach Park is home to the Diamondback Terrapin Turtle. The hatchlings emerge from August to October and are completely on their own. Only 1-3% to of the eggs laid produce hatchlings, and the number of hatchlings that survive to adulthood is believed to be similarly low. Sean Cordes, Natural Resource Officer, tells us about a program that fosters these little turtles through the winter and how you can participate in their release back into the marshes. With me today on the phone is Sean Cordes, Natural Resource Officer with the Town of Barnstable. Sean, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. The warm weather has brought out lots of things, I think, in the natural world in the last two days. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Must be great out there at the beach at this time of year, too. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's getting busy. Um, you know, a lot of recreational opportunities for, the, for everybody coming out here. Um, and like you said, a lot of wildlife starting to come out. Clovers are starting to set up shop, um, and we might even see pretty soon here the emergence of the uh, Diamondback Terrapins out on the marsh. And that's exciting. Let's talk about that today. I really think that uh, um, residents want to know about the littlest turtles in our midst. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, a little bit about the Diamondback Terrapins. It's a, it's a threatened species here in the state of Massachusetts. We have a um, Pretty good sized population here out at Sandy Neck. They nest every summer in the sand dunes. Um, and then in the fall, those hatchlings come out of the dunes and make their way back to the marsh, um, which is uh, you know, a very tough endeavor to get all the way through. Only about one in every hundred hatchlings makes it to the marsh. Um, so part of our efforts here is um, we do a Head Start program where we take some of these hatchlings. Oftentimes these nests are laid in really vulnerable areas, like directly on the marsh trail. So we're able to relocate those and monitor them once they hatch out. We give them out to schools and some other organizations who raise them over the winter. Um, and they grow nice and strong. They're usually about the size of a three-year-old turtle before they're released back into the wild just about this time of year. In another couple of weeks, we'll be starting up those releases. Um, and, you know, it should give them a much better shot at survival of the wild. They're beyond that really vulnerable stage in their life at that point, which is excellent. 
And I love how you uh, put these in the classrooms as well so kids can learn about that environment, uh, learn about the turtle themselves, and then have some invested interest in the natural world as they're growing up. Yes, yeah, definitely. And we can see, you know, that interest. It's, it's really great. The, the kids become very invested in it. They're asking a lot of questions. Uh, oftentimes we see them come back to the park uh, because they have a connection with the area, with that animal, and sort of knowing that they help to to raise that animal and hopefully that it's doing well in the wild for many years to come, which is awesome. So they get released in the wild. Um, what happens to them then? How do you know whether they've survived or uh, is there some type of tracking mechanism? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. Um, before this year, there's actually, unfortunately, not much we could do to um, really determine that, um, you know, just based on trends and data from the amount of nests we've found over time, it seems to be a successful system. It's part of our overall conservation effort. One thing that we did implement this year to really help with getting a, a solid understanding of the success of these animals is um, starting to implement pit tags. Um, and what a pit tag is, is just a tiny little um, you know, piece of wire, like a little radio tag. Um, and, you know, very similar to the tags that they would put inside of a pet, like a dog or a cat. Like so, a microchip. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So those get implement, implanted um, inside the animal. It's, it's very, you know, non-invasive. It goes just under the skin behind the rear leg. Um, and each one of those tags has its own unique ID. So we can't track them directly. Um, it's not like a, a true radio tag. Um, where you would, you know, actually track the animal. But if we ever encounter that animal in the wild, all we have to do is scan that animal. And if it has that pit tag in it, it'll show up. Its ID will show up right there. And we can actually trace it back to the specific turtle, you know, from which classroom it was raised in and what year it's from um, and sort of see how it's doing, which is, which is really cool. That is fantastic, and, the, and uh, I would imagine that the classrooms that raised them would always want to know, geez, did my turtle make it? Is there uh, any way that we can find out where he is today or where she is today? So what, what a wonderful uh, uh, new thing to, to do for uh, the classrooms as well as for the conservation efforts. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're really excited, and, and you know, it's exciting to hopefully be able to offer that information to classrooms in the future. Um, you know, and, and these presumably can last a lifetime. There's nothing active on them. Again, it's just a little piece of wire. So um, unless that tag gets lost for, for whatever reason, it should last the entirety of that animal's life. So, Turtles live a long time, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, you know, lots of folks, um, you know, are interested in this program, and it's great that the schools, but how can the public get involved? Good question. So um, we, we do hear that a lot as well. So, you know, not only do the schools have this invested interest in these animals year to year, but the public, um, you know, always wants to know what's going on and how they can help participate um, and, you know, what more could be done. And one of the things that we try to do every year is have a public turtle release as well. So many of the schools do their own releases with those animals that they raise. Um, but we usually have a few turtles right at the um, office at MEA, and those are usually turtles that have a, need a little extra care throughout, the, especially the beginning of their life, and maybe not eating as well or um, have some sort of issue. So we're monitoring them a lot more closely, and oftentimes they stay with us throughout the winter. So we have a few of those that we like to release um, on our own, and in turn, we're able to invite the public to this release to be able to help out and watch, you know, give the last goodbyes to the turtles as they make their way into the wild. So we are going to be doing one of those this year with at least three terrapins, and that's going to be June 25th, which is a Monday um, at 5.30 p.m., and that's going to be right here at Standing Neck Beach, and it's open to uh, you know any member of the public, uh, even people who may be raising a turtle in their classroom, they can join for that one as well. So anyone who's interested is welcome to, uh, to join us for that. And we would uh, probably caution people to wear shoes that they don't mind getting muck on. Am I correct on that? <laughs> yes, definitely. So it will be a little bit of a walk through the marsh. Um, so definitely shoes you don't mind getting dirty. Um, caution against flip-flops just because they can get 
stuck in the mud. We've have had deep blue flip flops out there before. Um, and then just a few other things, you know, the, the usual ticks and poison ivy, um, all that sort of stuff is out there. So just something to keep in mind as you make your way on, on those trails. So do people need to register for, for that, or would they just show up at the gatehouse? So they can show up right at the gatehouse. You're certainly welcome to um, call the office. The, the main office, Natural Resources, is 508-790-6272 um, to express your interest, but it's not required. Um, but it is good to get a, um, an idea of how many people we might be expecting and what the, the interest level is. Uh, all exciting news from Barnstable's Sandy Neck. Uh, thank you so much, Sean, for uh, spending some time with us, and uh, good luck with the turtles. I think maybe you might see Channel 18 out there at uh, 5 p.m. on June 25th. Excellent. Sounds good. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you. We made a trip out to the Osterville Library to talk with director Cindy Cotton about the all the cool events happening at the library this month. And we stopped into the kids and big kids makerspace to play. Libraries have changed dramatically over the years. Uh, one of the biggest uh, changes that we see in libraries is that they're adding more services, more programs, more events. We're here at Osterville Library with Cindy Cotton, the executive director. Hi. Hi. Nice to have you here. Thanks. So. Brand new library a couple of years ago. Yep, it's actually six years now. Six already, that's amazing. But you have so many things going on here in the library. You're uh, one of the, probably the most prolific in events uh, <laughs> as you start up at your season, obviously, coming up in May. Uh, tell us a little bit, you've got a really cool event coming up May 5th. May 5th is Oh Well Day. It's um, the OBPA puts this on and we're the host of most of the events. There's a lot of children's programs with yoga, meditation, nutrition, chair massage. We're doing a dog walk because we're a dog-friendly library, so we're going to do um, a walk. There's all sorts of uh, events going on, and there's flyers at the library and on our website, so people can take advantage of all the events that day. So they run the events run from the beginning uh, from right through about, the afternoon? From about 9 to 2 o'clock. Okay, and it's all, all in Osterville. Friendly. Yep, all age-friendly and all in Osterville. A lot of things take place here, but there'll also be things throughout the village. So you've collaborated with other businesses? Always. We That's love great. collaboration. We do a lot of that here. Great. And you have another one. Uh, so the weather we hear is kind of going to break. It looks like spring today. Uh, golf, anyone? Yeah. Coming up May 9th, uh, 18th is our annual golf event. We have that at the Wieno Club, and it's a, a usually a beautiful day of golf and friendship, and we have dinner at the clubhouse afterwards with an auction and there's also a dinner option so if a spouse or somebody always wanted to go to the Wieno Club and have dinner it's a great opportunity for a lovely dinner and some great auction items and support the library. That's a really nice golf course too. It's beautiful. And the food's really good yeah, too. It's excellent. <laughs> there's no place like it around. So we're going to wish for great weather yeah. for that event because that's one of your major fundraisers yes, it for is. the library. Yep. Excellent. And people can get that information here at the library? They can get it at the library or on our website. Okay. What other programs do you have that are uh, uh, people are interested in nowadays? Well, we're really excited. This summer from June 3rd through uh, the end of July, we're going to have 35 Ralph and Martha Cahoons on exhibit here. Um, it's curated by Cindy Nickerson, and there's going to be several programs geared around restoration, collecting, um, David Newton, who bought the old Cahoon um, workshop in Osterville, found actually Cahoon's hidden in the wall, and he's going to be talking about that. So there's eight programs, and there'll be a varied interest in art and art collecting. And the Cahoon collection, just some of the artwork that I've seen over the years, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, very whimsical in some ways, very nautical in other yeah. ways. Um, people will really enjoy that yeah. exhibit. We're really thrilled to have this exhibit. We have a lot of art, as you can see, around the building now. We have bronze art and um, oil paintings, and we have a whimsical display in the showcase. So we always have different exhibits going on here. Excellent. Uh, you also have a kids' maker space, yeah. which I thought was fascinating, being a maker myself. You've embraced the maker movement here at the library. Very much so. Um, we have a lot of kits that kids can use with for coding. We have drafting for architects. We have um, different movements and colors and exploration and crafts. We also, through a generous donation, had our dollhouse 
totally redone, which is now a dream house. So kids can use imagination and interior design and movement, and we do stop animation videos with it also. So there's a lot of in incorporating that for the younger kids. For as they get a little older, we also um, have a Dremel 3D printer. So we're doing programs geared around that. And we also just uh, got two Oculus Rifts virtual reality. And we have 12 laptops, so we're going to be doing training in, in basic computers. Um, we just did Ancestry. Um, we're doing uh, LinkedIn, a lot of different other classes here. And um, we're doing things with Cape Literacy in Junior Tech this summer. We're doing two weeks with uh, gaming and C++. So we so always kids, have a lot. Yeah, the, the, the kids' programs, especially with the Makerspace now, um, this is a lot of hands-on yes, learning. We're it's not necessarily devices in your face, watching a movie. You're, you're, nope, you're we're doing We're hands-on. We're building, creating, thinking, and you know, working through issues and problems, and, and just a lot of things that <clears throat> you know, are so different that we used to do when we were younger, kind of like bringing that back. So let's talk about that a little bit. At libraries, um, you know, there's been this one camp that says the relevancy, you know, is, isn't there, but you have proved relevancy just by changing how you perceive this as a meeting place and a learning institution. It truly is a community space. And like a, a lot of things, um, it's like I had my nieces here and nephew the other day, and it was like, what do I do? So we went into the children's room and we took one of the kits. And we all just made different things together and different explored using different products and different things and working and creating, which was nice to be able to do that. It's a lot of things that families can do together, like working with the coding kit so, or watching, you know, programming with the 3D printer or designing in the dollhouse. You know, you're all thinking and imagining and working together, creating your own story. Right. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Anything else you want to tell folks <coughs> as we uh, finish up the interview today? Wow, we have so much going on here. Come to our website. We have music in the summer. We have so many wonderful programs that we try to reach out um, to our community and collaborate with others. So it's a beautiful place, and I hope you come by and visit us. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Here's an event on the community calendar for this weekend. The second annual Oh Well Osterville Wellness Day is this Saturday, May 5th, 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. A family-oriented health and wellness day will have a variety of wellness-related events that take place throughout the morning and afternoon. There will be free yoga and fitness classes at the Osterville Library and other activities throughout the Village Center, including healthy food tables and samples, the Cape Cod Healthcare Blood Mobile, meditation, events for kids, chair massage, and a wellness yard sale at Rockland Trust to benefit WellStrong. It's sponsored by the Osterville Business and Professional Association. We hope you'll join us again Monday for interviews with the Cape and Islands Workforce Development Board, outreach programs at the Senior Center, and more. I am no Jedi, but I know the Force. It moves through and surrounds every living thing. Close your eyes, feel it, the light. It's always been there. It will guide you. Maz Kanata. May the fourth be with you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.